Welcome to Electron Line. Up until now, we've been dealing with impulse input pulses that were just one pulse long. We haven't been dealing with what we call periodic functions, where we have multiple pulses, maybe an infinite number of pulses relative to the problem. So here's an example of that. We have a continual pulse with uh, some time in between. So I have a pulse, some time, a pulse, some time, but they're identical in respect. The width and the height of each pulse is the same, the, t the dead time or the rest time in between is exactly the same. So you can see that here the whole function repeats exactly as it did before. This portion of the function is exactly the same as this portion, this portion is exactly the same as this portion and so forth. So we call this the period of the function denoted by time equals p. And we can then say that f of t plus p is exactly the same as f of t. It doesn't matter if you start here or here or here, the function looks exactly the same. The Laplace transform of a function by definition is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st times the function times dt. And since we have all these multiple pulses in the periodic function, we can say that we can snip it up into pieces where we integrate from 0 to p, from p to 2p, from 2p to 3p, of e to the minus st, f of t, dt, and so forth. And then, of course, we realize that there's a time delay in each case, so we could say that here there's no time delay because we started time equals zero, but here we started time equals p, so there's a time delay of p, here there's a time delay of 2p, so we can really write the function like this, or the set of integrals like that. And then you realize that s times p and s times 2p and so forth, that's basically a constant. The period is a constant, s is a constant, so we can factor those out, we can bring those out of the integral, and so we can write this as 1 plus e to the minus sp plus e to the minus 2sp plus e to the minus 3sp and so forth forever times what's left, which is the integral from 0 to p of e to the minus s times tau, which is the dummy variable, the function in respect to tau d tau. Now when we look at this portion right here, this is the Laplace transform of any function. In this case, the Laplace transform of just a single pulse. And if you then multiply it times this infinite series, well, infinite series are kind of hard to work with, but actually we can replace this infinite series by the quantity 1 over 1 minus e to the minus sp. If you take 1 and divide it by this binomial, 1 minus e to the minus sp, and you work it out continuously, you'll get this entire infinite series. So in other words, we can replace this by just this quantity right here. Now since this is the Laplace transform of a single pulse, if we then multiply that times this quantity right here, we now have the Laplace transform of the periodic function, all the pulses together. So the only difference is, this is the equation we use to find the Laplace transform of a single pulse, and then we multiply that times 1 divided by 1 minus e to the minus sp, and now we have the Laplace transform of the entire periodic function. One caution though, notice that the, the limit of integration of course goes over the entire period. That's the general equation. But in this case, notice that the input function only is valid for this portion of the period, whatever this portion is. So in, in actuality, in this case, in this example, the limits would go from zero to whatever this time period is right there instead of the whole period because there's nothing going on over there. But in the next several videos, we'll show you some examples of how to actually implement that. So this is the general equation for the Laplace transform of a periodic function. And that's how it's done.